in part one, I chided Korea for whitewashing the museum that uh, Imperial Japan built inside Cheonggyeonggung. Now I want to stress how the Princeton Museum purposefully and successfully downgraded Chosun Dynasty accomplishments. To this day, Koryo Celadon is prominently displayed in Korean collections around the world, just as it was in the Prince Yi Museum. There are many curators in America and Europe who are not familiar with Chosun Dynasty painters like Kim Hong-do. Whether working on his own or with others, he was a master of many styles. His portrait work got him commissions to paint King Chongjo, but he is most famous for genre paintings. They clearly show the vitality of Chosun and its people, as well as his skills. His greatest works were never displayed with Japan-controlled Korean museums, however. And this is what I want you to see. Uh, a nearly 200 meter mural made from 5,000 ceramic tiles. This is a big fat restoration of King Chongjo's 1795 procession to his father Sado's tomb. It's taken um, from the pages of an uigwe or an official court record. It showed what preparations went into this elaborate procession, who was in attendance, and precisely what it looked like. And it too was not included in Prince Yi Museum catalog collections. Kim Hong Do is listed as having worked on this uigwe. However, neither version in the National Museum mentions him. But his style is unmistakable in this restoration. You can see it on the faces of these attendants. And the strides of these horses and the actions of this proud drummer and officer. Yeah, they are haughty officials and happy officials. Statesmen-like officials and everywhere attentive guards. The version in the National Museum is about the size of a modern coffee table book. For a sense of scale, uh, this is one of the actual soldiers on an A4 paper. And you can see his face. And here it is next to the mural. Uh, Chongzhou made many trips to his father's grave, but this was the culmination of his filial piety. It marked the Hwanga for 60th birthday of both his father and mother, Lady Hegyong. So court ladies were invited. His sisters were invited. And most of all, he insisted his mother, Lady Hegyong, come. This is her palaquin here. After his death, she wrote that uh, she thought the whole ceremony was too lavish and extravagant to visit the tomb of her husband. She would have much rather just had a solemn occasion. But for her son, she pretended to be overjoyed. And I'm sure right behind her was a beaming King Chongjo, which you can sort of see on this uh, horse. The Korean tourist information explains that it was forbidden to portray the royal family in official documents like this. Uh, they left that out in the English translation here. Uh, now I want to jump back to the original part three in the fall of 2021. But first, there's one page I want to show you from the Uigwe. This temporary pontoon bridge, engineered from boats, allowed the processions nearly 1,800 people and 800 horses to cross the Hangang. And that exact spot on the river is our next destination. So we're going to take line 3 to line 4 to Ichon Station for the last uh, spot of this tour. So Seoul Subway is among the most convenient and safest and cleanest in the world. So if you ever get a chance to take it, you should. From Ichon Station exit 4, it's just a short walk to the Hangang along this route, almost straight. So this is the Hangang River Park and we are going to head over this way toward Yoido. So there's a bike rental station uh, right as soon as you get to the river. Uh, this is different from the ones in the city. You have to give a deposit to this guy and then you're on your way. Oh, with an ID. Uh, your ID is your deposit. Uh, I'm walking because I don't want to have to return my bike, but I wanted to show the bike trail because it's fantastic. Uh, 
it can get a little bit crowded and kids running out so a little bit dangerous you have to be careful but it's incredible on both sides of the river for many many miles and and here we are this is what i wanted to show the spot on the han river where the chosen court put a, a bridge a pontoon bridge um, made out of boats side by side and cross the river to go to Sado's uh, gravesite in present-day Suwon, near present-day Suwon. And another thing I love about Seoul is that there's water skiing. Uh, to get to Nodosom, we're going to take this elevator up to the Hangang Degyo, the main bridge for the Han River. So here's the view from the bridge and the old banisters which used to have messages leading people not to kill themselves. This one says, when times are bad, um, close your eyes, think among your, and talk to yourself about it. Uh, and what kind of person are you? Because there's so many suicides in Korea, and off this bridge in particular. And then here are the new banisters that have these rollers that if you try to get up, they turn. But I think if I got up, I think it would help me over, so I'm a little bit worried about this, but also it blocks the view exactly eye level. Obviously, the uh, suicide prevention is still a work in progress. This one goes right over the old phone that you could call for help. Instead of closing your eyes and talking things over when you're depressed, I think it's better to come to this island and walk around. Nodulsum opened uh, just before Corona hit and it has uh, restaurants and a lot of venues for live music and unfortunately those haven't been able to be used. From here you can catch a tremendous sunset sometimes. And from this side of the island I'm sure you could see tremendous sunrises but I've never gotten up in time to see them. And you can also see Lotte Tower, the tallest building in Korea. I think it's about the 12th tallest in the world and it looks like from Lord of the Rings the Eye of Moldor and if there's time we're going to uh, go to Chongno Samga again and have dinner at Pojang Macha so and now we're back at Chongno Samga and the Pojang Macha are firing up it'll be uh, increasingly crowded as the evening goes on and Here's the menu. Um, if you read Korean, you know what it is. And so we're going to have Puktangju, which is a side of soju and beer. Mm, so we just got our order of live octopus, and it may be gross that it's moving, but it, the thing was going to be dead anyway. And these are just nerves, and the point is to show how fresh it is. There's not much flavor in this, honestly. It's the sauce that makes it great. And you have to be careful eating it because the tentacles can stick to your mouth and kill you. Mm. Oh, it's sticking. Okay. <laughs> and the mandu, which isn't moving but looks as equally delicious. And the chef is really kind. <laughs> So the last thing, uh, Geran Mari, the egg. Oh, and she threw in some uh, ham, I think, for free, which is really kind of her. So it wasn't uh, ham, it was spam, which is a delicacy in Asia. And I love spam, even though I know how bad it is. But um, it was really kind of her to give it to us. And if you do come to Pojang Maja, don't expect free stuff. I'm with a friend who is a regular here who goes and gets our own drinks to save her time and money. And that's why uh, she's been so kind to us. And one more thing about Pojang Maja is uh, you should bring cash to pay with it because um, they usually don't uh, take credit cards. So off the main street are a lot of these little alleys that are filled with bars and coffee shops and restaurants and more pojang wanchas. So I can kind of understand why CNN ranked it the way it did.
And this is what it looks like from up above where the uh, war in the valley so is. And that concludes part three of the King Chongzhou Cradle to Grave tour. See you in part four with Suwon Fortress, Yongjusa Temple, and the graves of Lady Hegyong, Sado, and King Chongzhou.